we have been going through the Word. I took a couple weeks to talk to you guys about 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I believe God is calling us to be people who walk by faith and not by sight. That we have our eternal security uh, in heaven. And so we're able to be people, like Paul encourages, that live courage courageously. We take steps by faith and we trust God for the rest of it. I encourage you, if you haven't, listen to those messages. God's going to continue to, to uh, I know it, this year, bring us to places that we haven't been before as a church and I believe it's all going to be for God's glory. It's all going to be for the expansion of his kingdom. It's all going to be to impact people with the good news of Jesus. Today, we're returning to Matthew chapter 6. So if you would, uh, open your word, whether it be paper or online, on the phone. Uh, we even, I was with Austin this morning talking about uh, the scriptures that are up on the screen. I found out that in order for the scriptures to, to match what I uh, read, you guys, or I read from the ESV every Sunday. Uh, I know the version in the computer program is NIV, and so it's a little different, but I found out I can download it. I just have to, this week, figure out what my password is and, and username for the easy worship. We'll figure all that out. We'll figure all that out. But, uh, you can follow along on the screen as well. So Matthew chapter 6, let's read to, uh, together. Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to read 1 through 4. It says this, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. About three weeks ago, we looked here at Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, that there is a warning here of practicing our righteousness so that other people can see. And as we examine that even further, he, we saw that there was maybe a slight contradiction or maybe two sides to the point. One side, don't practice your righteousness, don't be boastful, don't do your righteous acts, giving, praying, fasting, doing good for others, so that you can receive the badge of honor. Oh, way to go. You did it. I know, we're not in last place. I even did it here. <laughs> it's so ingrained in us as a culture to do something and to get credit for it. So I know when Jesus was speaking these words, don't do it in front of other people. He was speaking exactly to that aspect of our culture that says, hey, we want to get a little credit for the good that we do. But we see, we, we talked about the overall overarching message of the, of the Bible is that we should live our lives in such a way, we should do good for others in such a way that God receives the glory. So it wasn't so much this fear tactic that, oh no, I better not help somebody because what if my neighbor sees me? Or I better not do this because, uh oh, I might draw attention. No, we, we had, Jesus was speaking again in the, in the Sermon on the Mount to our heart. Make sure that when you do good, when you practice your righteousness, you are doing it in the right mode. Here, we see again Jesus speaking to our hearts. Man, I 
loved it. As a kid, I did the dishes, I got a gold star, right? I don't know who else did. Maybe some people did and had a girl, right? I, I had my chore chart. I could track, you know, my progress. But at school, I got a little reward because I attended school every day, you know? Um, when we finish courses or we, we, we get to the next level, you, you get the nice little shiny certificate with the, that can be printed off on any printer, but, it, but it's special because it contains the words of, uh, of official stamp on it, and, and we place them on our wall, and we have plaques for awards, and I, I received when I was, after seven years of being a missionary, out of the blue, I received a glass plaque with it, and it's etched in there, thank you for giving seven years to, to Chi Alpha. Uh, we see this even just in our culture, you know, big, big mega companies, right? They, they love to do stuff in the neighborhood. And sometimes we have to wonder, what are they really, why are they really doing it? Are they doing it for the good of the neighborhood? Or so that, you know, their name gets a little praise and they become the recognized brand in the area, right? The, the oil companies do this, right? They, they don't just, uh, they, they make commercials. They don't talk about commercials with the, the, the hardship and the, diff uh, and the difficult things about what it does to environment. No, they, they make it sound like, they show all the good things that they're doing and they, they make their name great and praised among people. This is part of our culture that we're motivated to be self-serving, to lift up ourselves, to get recognition. And this is what Jesus is again calling out when it comes to the topic of giving. Verse 2. Sound no trumpet. I just give him to the Lord. Look at me, bask in my glory as I go before the Lord with my gifts. There seems, there actually, as we look in scripture, right, we, it, it seems like this odd, like crazy thing that we would do that as I go to the box and back, hey, I got my check today, it's for the Lord, right? We can kind of imagine, this is the, this is the picture that Jesus is, is, is making, it's kind of actually even, I was trying to think of a different word. You think a hyperbole? He wasn't, he, he was maybe a little exaggerating the way in which people gave so that they could receive credit. I just can't even imagine what it would be like. I think oftentimes we more subtly sound our trumpets when we're doing something good. Jesus here was being intentionally ridiculous with the way that he described people giving with trumpets. Kind of a parody of sorts to, to show how people draw attention to their own wealth and generosity while they're giving gifts. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna etch my name in the side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a statue. We know this in the ancient world, as I was studying, there isn't any correlation to the sounding of trumpets. That was kind of this, kind of this ridiculous statement by Jesus so that the, 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 the hearers would understand, wow, that does sound crazy. But in the, in the ancient world, it was an important part of the culture uh, to show your wealth, to, to, to gain significance by what you could do or what you could provide for people. And so even now, you can go back to ancient ruin and, and find, just like today, I, I can remember as I was studying this, comparing this, I remember being at CBC and then seeing, like, to have, we had, all, we had um, a brick path laid, and it was like with all the different names of the people that had given to certain projects, right? In the same way, wealth in the time was used to increase influence. So the more they could get their name out, the more that they could they could build the next statue, they could do the next thing, it would help create this power vacuum so that they could get credit for what they had done. And other people could look at them as people that were significant in the community, that they were, they, they were ones with means. Giving became an 
opportunity to gain status. So if giving is not to be used as a status, what is, what is giving to God about? Before we listen to God's his instruction, what is giving to God about? Giving to God is giving back a portion of what he has blessed me with. We give as an understanding that everything we have Everything we have, every gift, every talent, every ability, the breath in our lungs, the heart beating, the brain processing, the finances that we receive, everything that we have has been given to us by God who creates us and sustains us. So giving back to him, giving to him, it, it, it's giving back to what he already has blessed me with. It's an acknowledgement that everything I have is his. That he actually gives these things to me for his purposes. Yeah, I think he still enjoys the fact that he, he still allows us and enjoys the fact that we enjoy things. I go fishing. There are certain fishing tools that I have that I spent a little bit more on than, than I did on the shoes. And I think he still gives us uh, desires and, and, and wants us to, to expand our talent. And you know, I don't think he, I don't think we're so selfish that we have to walk in our, that he that, that we have to take this to an extreme where we have to uh, walk around everywhere we go. And I, I think he understands where we're at. But it, but we give with an acknowledgement that everything I have is His. It's been given to me by Him. And so when I'm asked to give, or I'm prompted to give, or I see a need, I, I, I approach it with open hands. God, everything you've given, everything I have has been given to, to me by you, and everything that I own is it, yours. And so then, in, in giving, it becomes, God, it's, this is a response that Nothing is mine. When we give, we, we say to God, I trust you to continue to provide all of my needs. God, I give to you because, God, I know I can, I can dedicate 10% of my income back to you because, God, just as you provided for me the first thousand percent or hundred percent and, and, and everything that I need. God, I know if I give it to you, I trust you. I, I, I'm declaring my trust in you that you're going to provide everything I need. That, that really my 90% will be more blessed than my hundred percent because God, I, I trust you. I'm leaning into you. We, we've had a few conversations recently about uh, Sabbath and, and, and resting. Uh, I had a few conversations with people in the church, right? And, and what is Sabbathing? Man, it, it's saying to God, God, I trust you. I, I actually don't have to depend on my own work for things in my life to continue. So I, today, I'm going to dedicate this day to resting because, God, I, I, in that I'm saying, God, I, I trust you completely. It's not up to me to see the world to see, to see my need provided for God. I, I trust you entirely. Giving and, and tithing is that same is that same principle. God, I'm trusting you. I'm giving to you, trusting God that you're you're going to provide everything else that I need. God, in the same way that you have been faithful to me, God, I want to be faithful to you in my giving because God, I, I can trust you. Here specifically in, in Matthew chapter 6, it's speaking of giving to the needs of others. And I believe specifically, giving to the needs of others is a reflection of who God is. The way that we give to others, the way that we meet needs, is a reflection of God's own character. Our generosity is a direct reflection of our understanding of how God is generous to us. Now I know there's some in the room 
that are naturally generous. They give, they, they meet people's needs. I live with two of them, Denver and Rachel, all the time. Challenge me in this area of compassion and meeting people's needs. I told you I've confessed stories where we're walking down State Street and Denver sees somebody asking for, uh, for help and he's like, Dad, aren't you going to do something about this? And over and over again, it challenges my natural inclination to not do something. <coughs> but even as I talk with them, and, and they, they talk about their, their natural giftedness, and Denver and Rachel both, when we get into good discussions, they'll both say, you know, that yeah, it's just, it's just part of me, like I just know it. <coughs> That, I believe, it shows the heart of the Father, but I think it even, it fails sometimes to really show the full heart of God's generosity towards us. Last night I had an opportunity to play some ping pong with my neighbors, and I told them, they, uh, I told them, hey, if I, if I stay here another hour and play with you guys, you'll have to preach. I said, hey, tomorrow we're going to preach on John 3.16. He's like, all right, I got it. You know, but um, in this moment, reflecting on the generous heart of God, I know using John 3.16 is a verse that so many of us can quote, but I don't fully know if we all know the significance of it. The significance that God so loved the world. That he gave his only son. We worship a God who is generous to see. Amen. doesn't even hold his own son, his own being to himself. He held him with open hand and he gave to us. I intentionally use this simple verse because it demonstrates the greatest act of generosity that God loved. What is giving about? It's about seeing a need and thinking about that need, the best result for that situation at my greatest expense. This is the heart of the Father. This is the heart of the one that we worship. This is the heart of the one that we serve. One who is generous, not withholding any for your behalf and for mine. And when I read that from distance, I'm like, yeah, I can quote that. I remember that from, from kids' church. I, I said that verse over and over again. But no, when it gets down deep inside of me, then it changes who I am. And now I also become one who gives. Who, who lives with open hands. Everything that I have is not mine. It's been given to me. And I want to use this for your glory. God loves us. And he initiated the greatest act of generosity. This truly stands in contrast to our culture. That says, what's in it for me? How can I get noticed? How are people going to see what good thing I've done? One of the things that I, if there's anything I kind of nag back at Denver, the Denver uh, and Rachel both that compassion heart. They want to meet the need. They see the need. They're like, let's, let's do it. I don't think I teased Denver with a lot of things. Uh, I say, all right, Denver, what are you going to do? Oh, no. I'm, about, I'm saving up for a toy. <laughs> 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 I have got plans for this. Anyway. I want to keep, keep this close. Right? The thing about, the thing about love and giving is it's gonna cost us something. Yeah. Amen, yeah. 
It's going to cost us something. Yes. It cost God the Father to be willing to send us. Don't give cheap credit in. Oh, if somebody starts sounding a trumpet every Sunday when we have offerings, we'll have to tell them to stop. Somebody boasts about their gifts, this is what scripture says. If they boast about what they give, they boast about their gifts because they've already received their reward. They've done it for themselves, they've got the attention. But when we do it unto the Lord, when we do it with right motive, when we do it unto the Lord, then we receive from Him. And I'm not one to preach away, okay, you're going to, you're going to give, and then you're going to give big. I won't, I won't ever preach like that. I can't see that in Scripture. And I'm, trying, I'm still studying this. I'm going to tell you, because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk again next week. I'm still trying to figure out, what is this reward exactly that we get in here? I have some ideas. I see some Scriptures point to it. And others are like, oh. Again, just like if we're giving so that we can get credit, if we're giving so that we can receive the reward, our motives, I think Jesus would still come back and, and speak another message, your motives are still off. It's not give to get. But there is a principle that when you give, you do receive. We want people to see God by our giving and not ourselves. So let's look a little further, verse 3 and 4 here. It says, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. I love how Jesus said this. I want to encourage you guys this today. He says, But when you give, there's an automatic assumption in Jesus' words that as a follower of Jesus, as a person of the kingdom, that you will be given. If your toes are getting stepped on, just put them underneath the chair a little bit. <laughs> when you give, it's a normal practice as a believer to be people who give. In this passage here, these next couple messages will be on three specific ways of practicing your righteousness. These are the three that Jesus said, when you practice your righteousness, and these are the three examples, that you would give, that you would pray, and that you would fast. This is like, these are, like saying, if you're a person in the kingdom, these are the principles, these are the, this is the way that you live, this should be normal in your life. Giving is a part of the Christ-like life. I want to encourage you, if you're not giving, start today. In doing so, I believe this will help us reflect the character of God, who He is. We are to be like our Father. We are to follow Jesus. And so, be a giver. Jesus already wants you to be. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 8 says this, Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Our giving is something that is between us and our Father in heaven. It's a reflection of who He is, and I, I believe this even how we do offerings, hey, there's lots of back, there's online giving. You give to God. It doesn't say, it also doesn't say, decide in your heart what you should give. And it doesn't say in your heart that you should you should decide not to give. Right? It's not, it's not a hook off. Oh, my heart says I should give. It's all right. No, it is decide what you're going to do. There are needs to be met, and God has given us these things, so that these needs would be, so that his glory would be famous among the people, the world. Jesus again 
emphasizes here in chapter 6 is an emphasis on privacy of our acts of righteousness, giving specifically. Jesus says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. <coughs> There's a whole principle in this too, like that I won't get into this morning because it's about right hand blessings and, and why there was why it was said here the, the right and the left and some there's some scriptural principles about how the right hand is a hand of blessing. Pretty awesome, but there's things to say. Know that the right hand, when whenever blessings were given or whatever things were bestowed upon people, or even uh, when when they would receive their anointing. There was always a, a right hand blessing. The right hand always represents the, the goodness of God, His ways. And so, uh, just just think about that as we're giving. They were or we're giving in such a way that they were blessing people. We're, we're giving out of who we are. We're giving inheritance. They were to give. But if uh, in in this uh, scripture, I know many. I, I've been around the church for a while. Many in the room have too. And 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 I've heard different people use this verse uh, and talk about the secrecy of their giving, that they don't want anybody to, to know these things, that, that um, uh, I even heard a really funny uh, story of, of a person, they received a giving record from a church, and on the giving record that they received, it had nothing on it, you know, and the guy got really outraged at the, at the church that, that they would give him a giving record, even though, uh, even though that he had given nothing, uh, because he didn't want his the left hand to know what his right hand was doing, and and the and the, the person that was telling the story kind of said like it, he didn't want to know that he wasn't giving to God at all. It was really odd. There's a whole bunch of weirdness. I guess all I have to say there's a whole bunch of weirdness on, on why we shouldn't tell and then what's the secrecy thing here. I, I just want to say in Scripture overall there is a there is a principle throughout all of Scripture where giving is celebrated and praised. Yeah. Like the fact that I mentioned we gave 365 pounds, that should be praised. Everybody should know that. It should be celebrated. Hey, we're doing something. We're, we're going to give glory to God. For the glory of God, for His sake, we help <coughs> support people who are hungry. In Scripture, where do we see this? In Acts chapter 4, the, the, the New Testament church, the early church, they were constantly selling things and giving stuff away. And in Acts chapter 4, verse 36, it even mentions them by name. Barnabas, he sold everything and he, he gave it. In Numbers chapter 7, it lists the, the, the names of the donors of all the people that provided things for the tabernacle. In 1 Chronicles 29.9, it also there was, a, there was a celebration of all the ways that it was gifted to, to build and to, to prepare the tabernacle. In, in, uh, in Philemon uh, chapter 1, verse 7, there's also the celebration of his generosity. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, verse 2 and 3, Paul actually uses the generosity of the Macedonians. I want to say it's pressure. Maybe it's motivation. For the Corinthian church to also be ones who share in the giving, the joy of giving and meeting other people's needs. Be like the Macedonian church. They had little, but they gave tons. They gave above <coughs> what their ability was. So, again, what is this? Jesus, you're, you're, you're saying, don't even let, my own body shouldn't know what I'm doing. I think Jesus was getting to a deeper practice of giving. Even in prayer, the next next chapter, he encouraged us to pray in private. Does that mean we never pray with our spouses? We never pray with our family? We never pray as a church? It comes back to Jesus, what Jesus is doing on the Sermon of the Mount. He's redefining, he's getting to the heart of what it means to follow God. He's calling out our culture. 
that boasts about the gift and craves attention and recognition for what for the good that we do. Make this your giving something that is between you and God. Don't do it for the recognition. Don't do it for the plaque. Don't do it because my giving report is going to give me a really good number at the end of the year. It's going to help me in my taxes. You guys got to give a crazy amount that actually happened. But anyway, that's another story. You should be givers, not for your sake, but for the benefits of God and his kingdom. Yes. Amen. I give, I am a generous person so that they may see God. I meet needs not because I want to meet the need, but because I want to show them the character of God. Jesus again focuses our attention, uh, the, our attention to our eternal motives. Why are you giving? Why do you give in the way that you do? Make sure that we rid ourselves completely of any sense of self-benefit in our gifts. So the questions this morning for us. First and foremost, does your giving represent well the generosity of God? Amen. 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 God was generous with us. He loved and he gave. And in the same way that, our, that this reflects our Father's giving, does your gift reflect the generous nature of our Father in heaven? second way that I put on to respond is, have we received the generous gift of our Father? Make sure that you've received the hope that He gave to His Son Jesus. And this morning we have an opportunity again to say, yes Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. Yes Jesus, I will make you Lord of my life. And I encourage you today, if you have not made that decision, to say, yes, Jesus, I will follow you every day of my life today, that it be the day that you receive the great love of your Heavenly Father. He cares for you, and he sent his son Jesus on your behalf, knowing every wrong thing that you've done, so that we may receive it. This morning, I want to pray privately on this matter. Examining our hearts, say, does my generosity, does my giving reflect the generosity of my Father? Have I been self-serving in my gift? Give. And then we respond, Father, forgive us. Yes. Father, increase our ability to look like you yes. so that you can receive glory. Yes. Lord, let me become us. <laughs> So that you become greater. Let me pray this morning. We'll take a few minutes to process. Father, I thank you for your word this morning that does cut to the very nature of our culture, that loves to receive recognition. God, I pray that we would be a people that reflect the generosity of our Father. You loved and you gave. Lord, I pray that you would rid us of self-righteousness, of, of acts of, of, of self to gain for our own. God, that we would, as you did, serve even to the point of death. We would give from what we have been given. We can trust you to provide for all these things. Lord, forgive us where we have lacked to reflect your image. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let's take a few moments and through this and I'll be back up to closing.